What side am I on? What side am I supposed to be on? I never know. What's up tonight? Where's everybody at? Jacob Workman, what is up? I want to especially thank Mr. Workman for supporting me. And uh, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Get a lot of good uh, text out there and a lot of good messenger messages. And always be free to get, get a hold of me if you'd like to. Uh, that makes makes my day. And I will. It, the best way to still get a hold of me is uh, through email. But, you know, if you got uh, messenger, I do look at it on occasions, but I'm not like right on top of that like I am some stuff. I don't know what the hell I'm kind of right on. I'm not even sure. I knew this morning when I was cutting videos that I wanted to do a show on uh, Apache Death Game. And I know it's not the first time that we've done that. One thing I want you to do is get out your magic Google Earth if you have Google Earth, because we will be taking a look at Google Earth. We got three videos, not one, not two, not three. Oh, it is three. We do have one, two, three. So, uh, Tuesday show should be really interesting. I was motivated uh, by people, and I won't say who only because I don't. I want to make sure that they, uh, they, they stay like under under the radar. Uh, I was uh, really motivated Tuesday to talk nothing but what's going on in the state of Arizona with the uh, BLM land. What's going on with these uh, private uh, these companies that are investing uh, these nonprofits that are deciding that they're the ones that are going to save the universe. Uh, the Gila Bin project, we're going to take a look at that. We're going to see, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff on there, a lot of, a lot of chit chat, but what's that really mean to the average guy like myself and others out there that love to go out and see these things. And, uh, and we're going to talk about that on Tuesday and I'm going to raise some hell on Tuesday. I probably will have everybody and their brother on that podcast as far as, and, and I'm going to open it up to anybody that wants to come on and chat about that. Anybody from any one of these organizations uh, that, that want to come on and talk about what they're doing to protect uh, Gila or, or any other area. What does that mean? Does that mean that, uh, that it's open to us. Does that mean the way to protect it is do what they've done to about five other sites where they've shut them down? Is that protecting that? Is that what you're telling me? There's going to be protection, you know, and uh, I'm real curious to that. So I'm going to have an open, uh, an open mic, any, any viewer that would like to come on and talk about that and wants to even come on with me on this show, let me know. And we will have a setup. I can have 10 people on here at a time. If you don't want to, or you just like to call in, we'll figure out a way to do that. But I think it is time that as these different groups have decided that they are going to save these locations, which I'm not saying is not maybe an admirable thing to do. Got to watch out for that camera. When you go like this, it goes like this. So it flashes, boom, got to shut it down. Okay, so it's going to be very interesting and and probably going to piss off a lot of people. I know a lot of people out there are uncomfortable to be associated. Some people don't give a shit. Some people do. Uh, I can respect if you want to stay on the sidebar. I, I, I can respect if you want to get on the camera. Whatever you want to do, you're going to be able to do it. That is going to be Tuesday's show coming up, and we will talk about Arizona – uh, being shut down or opened up and these different groups that are trying to save us. What does that mean? And again, open mic, man, I'll listen to any of you. BLM wants to come on uh, any of that kind of stuff. You know, uh, we've had, we have four to five places now, six places that are shut down. So I want to know why. Okay. And so what does that mean? They're shut down forever. Uh, does that mean that they're open? I mean, a lot of people out here, hopefully, if you're watching this channel, you like to go explore. 
what does that mean for the, the average guy? So if they get this big project in Gila Bend, is it the greatest thing ever? Do we need to get behind it? Do we need to give them, give them a hand? Because when it's done, it's going to be the most awesome thing ever. Or is it going to mean that we're going to shut it down? You know, what does it mean? I want to know what this guy's plans are, you know, save the Gila. What is there going to be? A, I, you know, I, last time I was out there, I didn't see any housing additions going on, but you never know. I mean, the way it's moving in Phoenix, who knows? It could possibly be. Don't see it. So now what are we protecting it from? Do we have historical sites out there that we can't even access? Do we have these things? So we have a lot of people that have a lot of different ideas on what it is. And I'm great with it, man. You have to have ideas to get stuff going. You've got to get motivated. You've got to, you got to be a, an aggressor if you want to save these places. But what is the plan? Is the plan a padlock? Is the plan uh, access for everybody? Is the plan uh, staying on the trail and walking in single file? Uh, is the plan... Uh, paving it is the plan is the what is the plan you know uh i i don't see i i've been all over gila and i don't see a lot of damage with the exception of the citizens of what appears to be gila doing the damage it's not somebody from out 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 in the area and if the police can't control the graffiti on the bridge down there uh at the dam then how in the hell are they going to control the rest of it? So there is a lot of that uh, stuff going on. What does Jacob say? Jacob says skepticism is key in today's society. Unfortunately, you know, it is. Uh, you want to think that, that the whole plan is that we're going to protect it, but the problem that I see right now, I, and this we're not getting into Apache Trail just yet or, or the Apache Death Cave just yet, but I, I'm passionate about this because I'm afraid of what they'll do. And I'm afraid that their theory of, of, of being able to protect and conserve means to, to lock down. And if it doesn't mean that, come on here. I, there's four or five of them that I'm aware of that could come on here. State your case. And, and if, you're, if your case is noble, then guess what? You're going to have a whole bunch of people that are going to get behind you. Because the, the problem with this also is there is a small group trying to push this, but they're not doing it with the support of the people of Arizona that I'm aware of. And anything that I'm saying that I am misspeaking on, I will take it back and walk it back and I will apologize. So I'm not afraid to be wrong, but if you're quiet, people change stuff when you're quiet and they don't tell you, you know, situations happen in COVID in the COVID era where things changed, but it was all in the dark and the secret throughout everything in society. And so let's bring it to the light. And then if it is a noble cause, I'm not a fence guy, but I'm already going to tell you that unless you are you are in a high volume area that you see immediate problems, but still at that, what is the solution to to open this and let people in? Uh, closing things down, I don't agree with at all. I do agree with the fact that you have a high volume area where people that aren't even involved in this can wander in, not knowing what what's going on. You know, uh, there's some places out there now they just put a fence around it. You know, the problem with that with me is they got a sign on the highway says, come down here. Okay. So, so why, why do we got a sign on the highway that says go down there to look at these petroglyphs and then, and they've been fine for, for, years, except if you were down there in 1901 or 1973, then you were going to probably have some problems. But, you know, I, I it, you know, it's, it's not a zoo. Okay. Uh, lockdowns work like gun control, you know? Uh, and again, if I'm speaking out of turn, if I'm speaking out of, uh, uh, any, in anything that's not appropriate. Uh, but you know, what is the track record? Okay. Okay. So let's just say you have an area. Let's say you have a, let's just throw something out there. Picacho peak, 
very over there. Okay, we'll throw that out. Okay, that's pretty dumb. Sorry about that. But so we'll throw that out there. It's so, okay. So you lock it down. Now, what's the plan to open it? What is the plan? What well, oh, we don't well, we don't have a plan. Well, then don't lock it up. Okay. Don't lock it up if you ain't got a plan to control it. You know, and if you are gonna lock it up, let's have a plan. You know, let's let problems happen and then put a fence up later. So let's not be too proactive because you know what? You'd hate to be proactive. But again, you're dealing with basically government type situations. If you're a government worker, I apologize in advance. I know a few, uh, and I don't mean they're all bad people, but they don't, they, a lot of, not a lot of stuff goes. Uh, and anything that's hooked up with the government in any sense or form that it, t- name something that runs efficiently, that's government run anything. Give me one thing out there. You can't even say the FBI anymore. So, uh, so that's my rant. And if you, if you like that rant, watch on Tuesday, because I, I want everybody rant. I'd like to have a thousand people on here on Tuesday to talk about this because it is that near and dear to my heart. Because once they start shutting shit down, they will continue to shut shit down. Once you've changed verbiage, you've changed verbiage forever. So if the if the aim is true, then give us something to get behind. But if it's not true, I want to know that. Because there's a lot of hocus pocus stuff going on uh everywhere, you know, and uh and the good thing is this, we do have one common goal. And that common goal is to make sure this stuff does stick around. Then after that, if your thought process is, yeah, we want to stick around, but we don't want you to get to go see it. Well, now we got the second problem. But the first problem is we do have one common ground and we should get along with that. You know, all these all these, these associations, uh, government funds, BLM, all these people, I mean, they need us and we can make their jobs and life so much easier if, uh, if they were, uh, aboard, but see, that's not the game. The game is not to, uh, to, to unify the game is to divide, uh, so we can get away with doing what we're doing. Now that's my opinion. And, uh, if you don't uh, subscribe to it, uh, I'm good with that. And then I'll listen, you know, I, man, I, I, I like a good debate and I like good, intelligent conversation. And I like people that have passion and I love people that love the great state of Arizona. I'm glad the people that went to the golf turn and, and the football game, uh, not no, nothing personal. I love you all, but it was nice to get our town back. Uh, I hope you guys had fun and, uh, and, uh, adios. And so when you come back, uh, hopefully you can come see these sites. So that's where my rant went. So on Tuesday, let the word be out to all the different groups of people to come on and share. And I'll put everybody that wants to come on, on. So uh, get ready for that. And uh, I thought it was odd because, you know, when I, when I see some of my old videos, I, there's places here that just are unbelievable. You know, uh, Raven's Butte is unbelievable. Uh, uh, there, there's just certain places you go to that are just, phenomenal. And one of the coolest places I've ever been is Apache Death Cave. And Apache Death Cave is that place that fits so many different, uh, checks so many boxes for me. There is so much going on there. There's so much history that goes that are layered on there. There's a lot of myth. There's a lot of lore. There's a lot of truth. There's a lot of crazy stuff. There's a lot of spooky stuff. You know, there's all this history wrapped into this crossroads. And the Apache Death Cave is definitely at the crossroads of a lot of stuff that was going on back in the day. And, uh, you know, there's rumors of, uh, of Billy the Kid, uh, wandering down through there. And I'll show you that when you get, make sure that you, if you're not with us, get your uh, Google earth up and get it ready to rock or get ready to just like, take a look. But uh, there is so much going on there that makes that place so intriguing uh, that, that makes it fun. You know, there's old West history. There's, there's ancient history. There's not so ancient history. Uh, one of the greatest uh, things that I like when we do our research is when we find something in a book. Arizona Highways actually had a a uh, a group of people at the bottom of that uh, Diablo Gulch uh, that made me think that maybe there's something down there. Can I kayak there or need a motor? <laughs> uh 
Wrong spot. That's Skull Cave. My bad. Yes. Uh, if if anybody's got, a, oh, you know what? I just realized I've got access to a kayak, and I never, I, I never even thought about it. I never even thought about that. I do have access to a kayak now. I got to see how far it is to go to Skull uh, before it gets hot, because that's definitely something I need to get done. And or if you have a boat and you want to meet us down there and take us over and drop us off. I'm ready to go to Skull, uh, Skull Cave myself as well. Uh, I'm ready for that as well. So that's not even an issue, Jacob. Uh, find me a boat and let's get it on. Uh, because I've still, that's another one of those places that, you know, if you're not familiar, there's a, uh, there is a cave uh, at the lake that is where they had a massacre site. And uh, it's one of the places that I have always wanted to go. And, uh, but you got to have a boat to get there. Uh, but man, I think that's a long way across that lake, though. I don't know if you'd want to row. Hmm, I have to check that out. So if you look on your trusty, so where are we going today? Let's go take a look. Let's take the journey and uh, let's get in here to Google Earth. And there is Google Earth right there. And look at what it says. Apache Death Cave, there's where it be, right there. On 40 Highway, on the way, if you're heading that way, to the border of Arizona and New Mexico, a.k.a. maybe you're heading to uh, Albuquerque. You're, you know, you're going to come uh, right up here, and you're going to come in the 17, Kachina Village, Walnut Canyon, if you haven't been, it's pretty cool. Uh, one of those cool places that, uh, that you definitely can go and uh, see some ruined sites. It is a park. It is well done. Uh, it's one of them, you know, stay on the trails, to, you know, be careful. Uh, right there is one of those kind of like that. Uh, but there is the road here, and we're going, you're going to be heading towards Albuquerque which would be east. And where did my death cave go to? Let's spin this around a little bit. Not that much. It's about right. Okay, where is it at? I'd lost my uh, Purple Heart Trail. That is not it. That's the casino in Wyoming. And that is not it. That's Walnut Canyon. So we're farther east. I had that marked as you saw that, and I know the Crater Park is too far, so let's try right in here, and bam, there it is. So as we back out of here, you can see there is flag right there, and then right here in the recent, the easiest way to find it is it, the, the, the stream or the creek runs through it. That's Winslow. We will be going to Winslow as well. And if you see Crater Park or National Monument, look how big that dude is. You don't think that would have changed the whole, uh, the whole, the whole area. Uh, I have a meteor uh, that I was given that was found in the area of El Diablo a long, long time ago. And uh, it came out of this crater right here. It came out of that crater. So if we look on here, where is the, that's Wallace. Let's go back. Oh, hmm. I keep, I keep losing the Apache death cave, but I know one thing there is the, uh, there's the Creek that runs through it. It's not here. Is it here? No, it's on down. That's Babbitt tank. Here. Yeah. Is that it? Yes, there it is right there. See, we lost the little thing on there. Okay. So now an interesting thing when you're looking on it here is wagon box drawl. And supposedly when the wagon trains came through here, there was a place. This is how you got out of the, uh, of the canyon when you were crossing. Uh, is how you got out of it. And that's what the wagon box drawl is what I'm told. If that's 100% accurate, I can't tell you for sure, but I was told that. Uh, and I was also told that in this vicinity here along this and in, in El Diablo is where they used to, uh, that's where Billy the Kid 
uh, it was known to have roamed through there. I don't have any documentation on that being to set said being true, but that is what I understand it to be. And if you're still with me in there out there, uh, it's hard to tell since I'm in the screen. Uh, let me check that. Now oh, that's for the dog. Uh, there's the Canyon Diablo bridge. Okay. That is within the park. So when I say park, this is, this is land. This is, this is, they used to have a person here that wouldn't allow you to get in here. And I think they died. And uh, so your ability to get into Apache death cave every year gets less and less and less. And so that's the only thing I'm going to tell you is that if you want to go see this place, you better go see it because eventually what's going to happen is there's going to be a fence around it. And so here is the exit and there is an exit for it, believe it or not, right here. Now, when you get off right here, you're going to, this is a gas station and there's usually somebody camping right here. Just to, to, a little bit to tell you. Okay. So, there is the road right here. You can take either one of these roads right here. You can go in through here and come out here and you can come around here and you're going to park right here. This road for a flat road is absolutely unbelievably unequivocally rough as hell. Okay. So you might even want to stop in here and walk if you're in a car. Uh, and again, it's not, you know, it's just, it is just rough. And this is the town of Two Guns. Now, this was a gas station. This was a camping site right here. And then this was, if you look over here. Now, if you want to go to the zoo first, so when you take this first road, okay, you can run it over here. And this is, and there's cars. This is the zoo. It was pretty damn good size. And then there's buildings over here and here. And again, this bridge is still was intact last time I was there. And so there it is. Now, if you're going to the Apache Death Cave, okay, it's right here. And so you walk right in there. And then there used to be a ladder. Somebody told me the other day there's no ladder down there. Uh, so you'd have to climb, but it, and I don't think it would be horrendous. It wouldn't be easy as it was when there was a ramp there. And then what you're going to find is the structure here was still standing. These were all walls and things that they built. And this cave runs all the way underneath through here into here. Okay. So the Apache death cave, and you could actually get in underneath here and get into some of these locations if you are so inclined to do. And so this is the area of Two Gun, Arizona, home, home of the Apache Death Cave. So again, you come in here and you swing in here and then you run this road. You may want to walk in here and then you're going to come in there, right there. And that's what it's going to get you in there. Do you need a flashlight? Yes. If you don't have a flashlight, you can get into a little bit of it, but I still wouldn't want to go down there without a flashlight. You need a flashlight. So I guess that was pretty easy. So that is two guns. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to also discuss a place that is now off limits uh, because some moron uh, did some damage over here. So if you take that road there, and we'll go ahead and tell you why we, why we still have it up. See this road right here? You'll come across and you'll go around. And then you'll go down this road. This is a dirt road, okay? And you will follow that dirt road to right here. This is Canyon Diablo, okay? It is illegal now to cross these tracks. So that's all I can tell you. And they come, that trains come through there about 70 miles an hour. Now, this is El Diablo. This, we'll talk about this as we grow too. And there are uh, ruins there. Uh, at one time, a lot of ruins. This was a city. This was a town. So at one time, there was a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, and so you'll see remnants all over here. There's also a cemetery. I thought the cemetery was on the other side. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I thought it was. There's also a cemetery here. And uh, there is one grave that you can still read. 
And the gentleman, I'd have to remember what his name is, but anyway, he owned a trading post somewhere up in here. And uh, his family actually replaced that headstone so you can actually read it. The rest of the graves, and there's a few of them. Now, that is supposed to be the place where the infamous cowboy had the last drink. And so we'll study that a little bit tonight as we go through Canyon El Diablo. And that is the Apache Death Cave right there. So that will let you in on what we're doing. Uh, I have, If we got enough people, we got 16 people on here. So I'm going, hey, Cat B, what's up? What's up, Cat B? And there is Hogback's back. When I went, there were two dudes that made me feel. There, the first thing I'm going to tell you, Hogback 405, you get a lot of weird people up there. I carry. I'm just going to tell you. There's a reason I'm going to throw this out there. Two guns. It's called two guns. Probably should have two guns. Uh, there's a lot of weird weirdos up there. Uh, so I'm just going to let you know that. Uh, so make sure that if you decide to go, that, uh, that you know, I've always said the scariest thing is not the ghost or all the other things that may be up there, the spirits and all the stuff that could possibly be there. It is the fact that 40 highways running on there and there's some serial killer running up and down the road. Uh, I hate to tell you that, but that's what I feel. So, uh, so yeah. How the hell did I have 16 people? And then we went to eight. How the hell does that even work? I don't even think that's possible except for the fact I just saw it and it is. So let's talk a little bit about the Apache death cave. Uh, First off, what I'm going to do is we'll tell a little bit of the story of the Apache Death Cave on a video, and then you can kind of look at that, and then we'll go back into some more of the history of the Apache Death Cave, which is which is way, way. The, the Apache Death Cave, uh, Canyon El Diablo, uh, two guns, the history is phenomenal there. Some of it, they believe, might be a little bit uh, exaggeration. It might be a little made up, but still there's so much still there that really went on. That, that makes it intriguing uh, on and on and on. And so it really is a great story. It's one of my favorite stories of any story that we have done. Now, the first time I ever even heard of the Apache Death Cave was there was a gentleman named the Unknown Cameraman. And so he would go shoot stuff, but you couldn't see his face. Just a kick-ass idea, straight up. It really was. And so the unknown cameraman and, you know, cause he's, he doesn't want you to see who he is because he's the unknown cameraman and he's going to places he probably shouldn't go in. And so what a kick-ass idea. I always loved that, that whole philosophy, but he went up there and I was like, I gotta go to that Apache death cave. I mean, I have to go there, man. I have, I, I have to experience it. So I think we've taken three or four trips there. I love it. Every time I go again, uh, I, it just, it is just so cool uh, of a place. And again, it's one of them places that, you know, if you want to go see it, you better get up there and, and you better be careful because it draws, uh, it's a lunatic magnet as well. Uh, there is J E B stoked to tune in J E B. Jeb, what's up? How you doing, man? So the Apache Death Cave. We're gonna throw, we're gonna watch a couple of videos. We're gonna talk about a little history, and then we're gonna go on down the road, and we're gonna we're gonna do a little history on uh, the Apache Death Cave, and then we're gonna do a little history on uh, Two Guns the Town, and then we're gonna do a little history about the baddest town in the whole world, which was Canyon El Diablo. Schmack. So Jay Shrek and I'm with James, Miss Legends and Lies, and uh, let the adventure begin. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna go to, uh, I guess I answered my own question, so I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you got this. So, so, <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> so we're taking off. It's now six o'clock exactly. We're about a quarter of the way through Phoenix. Uh, we're gonna go up 17. We're on the 10, we're gonna hit the 17, we're gonna to go to flag, we're gonna jump on uh, 40, head uh, east towards Albuquerque, and two guns, I believe it's about 35 miles. I think it's about 35. I've been there a couple times. Now, what I'm trying to do today, James, is this. You know, we probably should have got our asses out of bed a little earlier, but that didn't happen. So now we'll fast forward to six o'clock. And that might seem early, but 
man, I want a drone shot. The whole deal is, I, you know, I, I haven't been able to get drone shots at uh, Two Guns. Because the wind? The wind is ah. absolutely, even when, when we went to uh, uh, Canyon Diablo, which is across, mm -hmm. which is north of there, I couldn't even do audio, it was so bad. And I want to take you up there, even though I've been up there. Also, I had one of our uh, subscribers uh, talk about, because we've got two videos out on the uh, the Apache Death Cave right now. Uh, was like, well, you wouldn't get a horse down that ramp that when we go in. So what I want to do today, a little bit on the Miss Legends and Lies, is, is could they have put 40 horses in that cave? So there's two things I want to do that, that I, man, I really want a drone shot. So I'm going to try to haul ass up there because usually the wind's, wind's a little calmer in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And then what I want to do is I really want to look at that. Uh, is that the story, the horses? Yeah, the, yeah, because they had to hide the horses too. Okay. Because, you know, there's 40 plus Apache, right? That's the story. That's the story, yeah. And they're hiding out in the cave. But I never looked at it till she said that. Because the reality of it is, is that the cave could have a different entrance from, you know, 100 something years ago. That'd be, well, help, like 140 years ago. Area. Mm -hmm. You really get. And then back back uh, towards Phoenix to make a big U. See the skull head right there? Anybody ever noticed that's a skeleton head? Jay Shrek, Miss Legends and Lies, and guess where we're at? We're back at the Apache Death Cave with James. Everybody ready to go for an adventure? You know, we're going to do two things today. Man, I was stressing to try to get some bone, uh, uh, drone footage, and we got some drone footage. Uh, I don't know how good it is, but we at least got it. The wind never stops up here, and that's one of the hardest things about the Apache Death Cave. I had one of my subscribers. We're going to see what kind of ghosts are down there because James loves ghosts and and by God if there was no reason that there should be a ghost after 43 people died in this one hole uh... man I was stressing to try to get some really explored he loves there was no reason that there should be a ghost night I'm in hell yeah let's do this I might need a light I got enough batteries to kill us. Be careful. Real deal, isn't it? Oh, that's cool, man. Be careful on the way down here. I got lights and batteries. Oh, my God. 
Okay, one of the uh, one of the places that we want to look at is on the right hand side when you go in right here. Uh, it, goes back, it goes back down in there. Now that I got James, we're going to run that down once we come, once back, we come back and see what we got, see what down, we got there. down there. Sink! Sink! I didn't do that because we might sink these two together. Sorry. And then these are the little things that they made. You know, for the, for the tour, for the tour. Yeah. Okay, the first thing when you come in here, you notice this piece right here. Holy shit. And you know you're in a cave right now, because all of a sudden it's gang, it's lowered itself about 20, 25 degrees. Yeah, probably tw eh, 20. And then you look up in here. I don't know. So, you know, could they put, say, 10 horses if they had them lined back up? James, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I feel like you could because it's obviously you're not looking for anyone's comfort when you're in that circumstance. You know what I mean? Like, if you're cramming something in here, you could have done it. I don't think they would have been happy about it. This piece of steel right up here. Old, old style rebar. You, you just start getting a different vibe. He also has moist up through here. There's the last time that I was in here. I did my little thing right in this area right here. But uh, turn the lights off just real quick, James. Just to show people that uh, I was telling you even right here. Could we stumble out of here? Yeah, but man, it's pitch black. Just because I know where it's going. You know, I know that I'd be going that way, right? But, and, and I'd have to hand it, you know, hand feel it through. I sure in the hell wouldn't want to though. And see, this goes way up there to the top. And it goes way up there, almost to the, and then here is the, uh, the back. That'd be a nice rock to hit you on the head. So could you could you get these horses back here? Yeah, you know I mean I mean it's all if there's enough clearance. You know, and I don't know what this floor looked like right here. That's the thing. You know, I don't know what it looked like at that time, back in the day. James. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. Oh, this is my little. This is this. Yes. You want to take that you light want to take with that light with it? Oh, I got this guy. I'm fine. Well, you don't have to worry about. Now I went about three quarters away. Okay. You have to be a skinny scorpion to get in that shit there, James. <laughs> yeah, you might want to take your bag. You might want to leave your bag. I'm going to leave my pack here. You didn't eat a big dinner, did you? No. No. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> So, so there's benefits, there's benefits, benefits of being real tiny. One of which being, of which being that. Nooks and crannies Nooks and all, crannies over, this all over this place. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have yeah, to do it by myself. Yeah, it'd be kind of weird. As James goes into the abyss. I can still hear him crawling around. How wide is it there, James? What's that? What's that? How wide is it? Um, my, oh, shoulders. my shoulders. So, so you, know, you know, the shoulders of a 12-year-old girl. <laughs> oh, man. You know, this is a creepy-ass place, though. I tell you what. Okay, I've almost uh, hit my limit. I'm at the little... Uh, Oh, it says go no further. 
ominous. It says go no further? It literally has a little writing that says go no further on it. That's funny. Well, you know what that means. <laughs> you know when you're in here and he's back there, but you're back here by yourself. You always think something's coming up behind you. You know, I don't know what these floors look like at the time that, you know, they had this. Uh, uh, and, you know, knows, who further. knows how far. I mean, There's you got to think about that. this. This is 130 years, you know. Just past that There's 130 years. Before I can no longer go anywhere. Try to get my so, there, you know. I don't know. That's kind of weird. Narrow. Thing hanging off the wall right there. But, I mean, you look up in here. Pretty creepy. going just past no further watch your head there there's a boulder you can smack yourself on if you're taller than me i'm gonna scoop my way on back to jeff but, uh, so, uh, so uh, there you have it there you have it what's up rod there's the point there's of no point return of no re yeah. uh, man a cool breeze whether it's a breeze that came from another part of the cave or whatever came through this son of a bitch and i'm telling you what made the hair on my legs my arms i should say it sounds like somebody walking back there no. There is a part two. We will not get into the part two tonight. So what about the Apache Death Cave? What makes it unique? Well, the Apache Death Cave. The story behind the Apache Death Cave is this. There was two rival tribes. One was Apache, one was Navajo. The Navajo uh, raided the uh, Apache and, uh, and, they, and they slaughtered a bunch of people, but they also stole a, uh, a couple of young girls. And so the party's out hunting them and they can't find them. It's like this party of people, all this whole group of people, 40, 40 warriors just disappeared off the face of the earth. And the story goes that they, they, they looked everywhere and they couldn't find them. They couldn't understand how all these, all these people could have just disappeared on this plains out there. And, uh, and one of the scouts that was trying to hunt him down felt this cool blast of hot air come from the ground. And then he realized that, they went underground and so they surrounded them and they asked him to give the girls back when they'd already killed the girls. And so what they did was they, uh, they, they put brush at the entrances and all that. And then they, they smoked them out. And if they tried to get out, they killed them. And, uh, and so supposedly 40 warriors were, were, uh, were killed in, in that cave that we were in. And, uh, and some people have said the story's a, a myth. Some people said it's true. Uh, but where it comes is that, Two Guns was a Route 66 roadside attraction, and part of the Two Guns attraction to try to get you to come off the road was the fact that they had this Apache Death Cave. Now they claimed that there were uh, their skulls and all that, all the bones of the of the warriors all in there when they finally when they first got in there, and then they built a gas station and a roadside attraction, and they built all this stuff, and they had a zoo, and the zoo is in there, and the zoo was extremely large. The zoo was actually very large. And so they had these walls and all this stuff built. And it was a, it was an attraction and a zoo and all that kind of stuff. And so that it that that opened the lore of the Apache Death Cave, basically. We'll get into that a little more, but there are so many great stories about the Apache Death Cave that we know to be true. We may not know exactly what happened 120, 130 years ago, but we do know that about uh, 80 years ago that there was a murder on that location. Uh, and that is supposedly when, when it's been blamed for the curse of the Apache Death Cave. And uh, so the two partners that owned the uh, Apache Death Cave, two guns, I should, I should call it, uh, had a disagreement and uh, he shot one, one partner shot the other partner in cold blood. And uh, the wife of, of the guy that was killed claimed to, to the fact that, that uh, 
he came, uh, he, uh, Indian Miller, as they called him, and he was not an Indian, but he went by Indian Miller, uh, shot Cundiff, which was the other partner, uh, dead with a gun in one of the houses that are over there now. They say that those souls still haunt the Apache Death Cave as well as the, as the uh, Apache Warriors. And so we know the murder was real. We know that. Now, as I'm, I'm going to say Prescott because I've, I've pissed off so many people this week by not giving them press kit, like a biscuit. It's press kit, but I'm going to call it Prescott from here on out because of all the shit they've given me, to be honest with you. And uh, so in Prescott, that was the area where they would do the court. So if you go up there, they've got a great court. Uh, great square up there. So that was where all the uh, all the trials and things went to. Uh, they went to trial and he got off scot-free. And so then the curse really just took off. And all these tragic things started to happen in the town of Two Gun. It was unbelievable. So many tragedies and all this bizarreness. And we'll get into that. But that's not all the story. The, after the death of Cundiff, there was more that, that happened that you can take the story then into Winslow, Arizona. Now, you may know Winslow from standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. You know, it's such a fine sight to see. It's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford. And so it's in that town that they buried Cundiff, the gentleman that was shot in cold blood at Two Guns, Arizona. And when they made his tombstone, they did something really pretty tricky. And so we're going to go to the second part. Now, one thing that I want to tell you about this journey, it, 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 I call it the loop, right? You can take this loop to uh, swing it up to 17, up to the 40, hit all kinds of just cool, cool stuff all the way on the 40 uh, to Hallbrook. And then you can stop on the way to Winslow, Arizona and stand on the corner and go through one of the coolest train stations you're going to in Winslow, Arizona. And then, and then the home lobby park, which is a ancient ruin site, which is pretty spectacular right off the road. And then you can then go to Hallbrook, do all the Hallbrook stuff, and then come back in town and make the loop. And it is a absolutely kick ass loop. It is absolutely unbelievable. And you can visit all this stuff. If you get a chance, though, when you go up there and you go to Winslow, definitely go in and see Mr. Mr. Cundiff. He deserves to have some recognition. Llega Hulu Rancheros. So it is the second part of this. We won't go through all of it, but uh, we'll go through some of it. This is this is not the second part of the first video, but this is a different video that delved back into some other stuff, and there are some stuff in it. Uh, that that does translate. But let's go to the cemetery in Winslow where the gentleman that was murdered in cold blood by Indian Miller. Jay Shrek in Winslow, Arizona. We're not standing on the corner, are we, James? No, no, we are in a cemetery. Because of why? Because we are trying to find Earl Marion Cundiff's grave. Now, Earl Marion Cundiff was well known for owning the Apache Death Cave in Two Guns, Arizona. Now, he became embroiled in a land dispute with a gentleman named Indian Miller. Indian Miller went to his home at Two Guns, Arizona and shot him down in cold blood, but was acquitted. So when they buried Earl right here, it said specifically killed by Indian Miller. This enraged Miller and he desecrated this exact tombstone. 
The city of Winslow decided it was a public nuisance. So they had killed by young Indian Miller taken out of this area right here. Even though the truth was he was killed by Indian Miller or was he really killed by the curse of the Apache Death Cave? And that's just one of the stories we're gonna get into as we unravel this mystery of the most haunted cave in the state of Arizona called the Apache Death Cave. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Well, we're back at the Apache Death Cave and it's getting ready to be dark and we're not, you're gonna yell out, Skidwalker! Are you gonna yell that out, James? We'll see. Because this is gonna be creepy and we'll be here at night. Let's go to the murder house. Sure thing. Let's do it. Sun's starting to set. And guess what? We're getting ready to go dark. Now let's take a walk real quick into a place a lot of people don't know about. They think the Apache Death Cave is just the Death Cave, but there's a lot more to it than that. One of the parts of the curse was that Indian Miller came into this very house, which we call the murder house and killed Cundiff in cold blood. He walked right through this door and shot Cundiff in cold blood. Cundiff didn't even have a gun, but Miller was acquitted. But the curse then went to Miller because then his daughter died in a car wreck. He was attacked by a cougar. He got bit by a Gila monster. And he finally left because he got cursed. But he's not the only one. That's just the start of the curse. Anyone that spent any time in this area, in this property, has dealt with the curse. You know, this place is absolutely incredible. You know, one of the things they say, because now remember we're in Navajo, Apache, and Hopi land, basically where all these cultures mixed. And one thing they say you never say out here is what, James? Skinwalker. Skinwalker! I'm more afraid of that than I think I am in the Apache Death Cage, Jane. Well, it's getting to be dusk, and uh, me and James are getting ready to go into the Apache Death Cave. James, what do you think, man? Well, <laughs> I think this is going to be an interesting night. You're not, like, big into this, are you? As much I'm really as... not. I'm not. It's my least favorite thing we do, but it's fun. Well, you know, so, I, you know, and maybe I make excuses because I just enjoy it, but, you know, I think part of history really does evolve the other side. I mean, and that's why, you know, we just don't do ghosts. I don't even consider myself a ghost hunter. But I do think that when we talk about the history of these places and why something would be cursed, you know, you need to go see if it's really cursed or is that just bullshit, you know? I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with ex experimenting with it. You know, one thing that I can say is that as we went into the... Uh, the different uh, places today. Uh, this, the curse part, you know, is it was it just bad luck, bad decisions, bad choices, you know? Uh, so Miller, Indian Miller, he gets acquitted immediately, right? Mm -hmm. And then because Cundiff's grave said killed by Indian Miller, he desecrated the tombstone when. He was killed by Indian Miller, right? What, what, yeah, his, all accounts say that he shot him in the house we were just in over there. And uh, 
you know, got off on it and then uh, decided he was going to go make sure that that grave didn't say it or something. Well, you know, a lot of people, though, they think that the Indian Death Cave is because of all the Apache that were killed in this cave, that that's like part of the, uh, you know, why it's cursed. But, you know, uh, the real ghost would be the caretaker in around 2000 that killed himself here, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. Cundiff, who died on this property, yeah. right? Uh, There's always reports of the little girl people see. You know, well, the little girl, I believe, from the reports that I saw was uh, Miller's daughter died in a car wreck. Yeah, you had said that earlier. I just keep seeing, like, on Facebook and all the paranormal sites, the postings about, like, seeing the little girl out here. So, I, we're, you know, we're going to try to communicate with them. We're going to see if there's something down there. We're going to see if there, you know, uh, if anything comes. But, you know, a lot of times we've always went down there. And we've never been down at night. I mean, even though the cave's dark, we've never been down at night. We've never been to this location at night. I, just, I felt it was important that we got out here at night to really feel, you know, what this was like. Because, you know, uh, I mean, I go back to something that you don't seem to have much of an issue with, and that is uh, skinwalkers. Yeah, I, don't, I guess because, I mean, it's not my culture, so I don't see, like, them having any, any reason to bother me. That's like a, a very like uh, indigenous cultures. Story. So you don't think they're gonna touch us? I don't know, man. I've seen a bunch of stories where like that one cat <laughs> from the uh, I won't go into this mountain alone at night thing. He uh, said he ran into one on the road. Oh, he did. I didn't hear that. Uh, yeah, it's towards the end of that video. He talks about being like, and what he assumed would be like a skinwalker. His dog got scared, hit under his truck when he pulled off the side of the road off the, off the highway. And... Well, so we'll see, man. I don't yeah. know. The one right yeah when you started coming here and then you brought me along for the next time it was like halfway through getting in the out of the cave and we ran into some people uh so i mean there was a motorhome just pulled out no is that a fire I mean, it's a fire what the hell is a fire truck doing out here well i tell you what i think it's almost time to go down it's getting dark uh hopefully the skinwalkers are coming out hopefully the serial killers will stay uh on 40 uh and it really my one of my bigger fears is just what you're going to meet when you come out of here right uh, and it's not paranormal that scares me it's the uh you know it's the it's I'm the always real far people. more concerned with people but uh so hey i think about the skin markers. Yeah, I know you are. I'm going to say that I saw it just the other day no one got eaten by a skin marker. When they were going here. Yeah, they, they didn't yell skin walker. Skin walker! They didn't do that, right? They did. It's a lot more quiet in here than I remembered it being. light of the cameras yeah let's do this go ahead and hit it right there and we'll Ooh. kill yours completely I like it. okay is anybody down here with us Is there a coward down here named Indian Miller who shot, shot an unarmed man in cold blood and then desecrated his grave when he only told the truth? I can see you being pissed off about that, but, you know, whether you had land disputes or lease disputes or whatever it might be, I, I can't see that being a reason. And, and you know, I don't, didn't know Cundiff. Maybe he was a terrible man also. But, uh, you know, to kill him in cold blood, that's pretty unbelievable. And I tell you what, if there ever was a curse, you got it, or you had it. I'm sure you're gone now, but uh, are you here with us? Do you have the balls to come back and talk to us?
disrespect you. What I'm saying is it's not physically back there. Look at that miss. See that miss with the light? <laughs> is that miss? I don't know. I can't. Can you see it? Man, that looked like miss staring up. Here to disturb well, you. Get, get, get your, your camera, camera and shoot this lens. Shoot, shoot the shoot my my, my screen. screen. Okay. Shoot that screen. You might have to get to the other side. Oh, it moved. Holy shit. It disappeared when I started trying to shoot it. Well, move your, you might be blocking it. Because the Indians would kick his ass and he sold his skull. Well, I mean, I would definitely be bitter if I was a victim of some kind of tragedy and then you sold my remains. Dude, go down that right there. I'll stay here. I won't leave. Dude. You gotta go if I don't take it. That's what I'm saying. Then all of a sudden my skeptic side goes away and I'm like, oh shit, just like in the jail. Well, you gotta get practice for the jail. Yeah. We're staying, just for like five, ten minutes. I'll be, I'll be right there in that one open. I will be. Stay back in here. Stay back in here, and then... Oh, I forgot to call the little girl! Little girl, are you in here? What's that? There's a little girl. You know, there's fingerprints on my glass, and I don't remember there being any fingerprints on my glass. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I mean, I don't touch my glass. No. I mean, this is mine. I'll take all of this right here, but I don't touch the glass. So somewhere, sometime when we were in here, somebody was looking in the in the truck. Well, that's lovely. Very, very comforting. There you go. See, you think it's the creepy stuff, and there it yeah. is. Yeah, nice. That's scary. <laughs> yeah, I definitely wouldn't have touched my glass. I would have, you know. Here, let's look at my window while we're at it. <laughs> right there on the, the right there <laughs> what the hell is <laughs> and you wouldn't it i mean no i don't do that that's funny because you know i'd shoot you exactly no that's exactly what that's I'm why i know you didn't do it because you, i would hear about it many times over now this is ours that's us that's that's getting in and out of the truck but that's that's funny dude well, i gotta chill you know what we look for now Aliens. Bam! That was a great trip. That 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 is a fun place. I mean, we had a lot of fun up there. Uh, it's pretty weird. There's some stuff I still don't know. I don't know. I can't say it was or wasn't. I don't know. There's just some weird stuff going on. But there's a lot of stuff to see up there. So if you're on your journey, there's so much different stuff. So we're going to pop back into Google Earth because that's what we do. And we're going to take a look at what is available to see if you want to make a day trip out of it. I don't want to get into that. I want to take this here and I want to go to share screen. I want to get back into Google Earth and let's open it up. Okay, so. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about Canyon El Diablo. Canyon El Diablo is supposed to have been the toughest town in, uh, in all of Arizona. And if you take this road here, across underneath the highway and follow this around and up and it goes on it don't look like a long way it's a long way and again now you you not legally supposed to cross these tracks there's three and they go by here at about a million miles an hour and when you see the video coming up you'll notice that there are some ruins it's hard to see on this screen right here where where the ruins because the ruins you can see a big wall 
I'm trying to see if they're, they're, they're showing up here. There's that and that, but there's, and unless that's, you know, I don't, I thought you walked right across and the ruins were right there when we were up there last. Maybe it wasn't, maybe this is it right here. Uh, but they were pretty good, but they were really, they, they were really hurting. Uh, they had, it take a lot of weather. So that is where we're going to be going when we go to Canyon uh, uh, El Diablo. Now, what makes this unique is this gorge right here. Even though that bridge does not actually go like that. It's kind of cool that it looks like that, but it doesn't do that. Uh, that bridge there. So they're running the, uh, the, the story goes is this, is that they are building this trail. Uh, they're building these tracks right here. Okay. They're going across the Southwest. Never saw that one right there. What is that one? That's pretty. So that's actually it right there. Okay. So there's ruins all the way down here that I wasn't even aware of then. Okay. Cause that's it right there. That is, that is it. That, that, this is the, this is it right here. Okay. Cause you can drive down here. You can run along the side and you can drive down here to this point here. But again, it's illegal to cross that track. So this is a cemetery right here too. That's exactly right. I'm glad I dialed back in. Okay. Here is the town. It was fairly large in years. There's pictures of it. And you, and this wall right here is pretty massive. Now they have a cistern right here. That's one of the coolest cisterns I've ever seen anywhere. And that's what caught on fire. Somebody caught that on fire. They continue to put trash there. Uh, and, and somebody, and that's why after that happened, they shut all this down right here. So, uh, now that is the town right there that you're going to see now because this bridge, so this bridge was ordered from Germany because we did not make the quality of steel that they needed to put this bridge in. So the steel bridge, uh, was supposed to go across here. Steel, steel bridge comes in from Germany and it's too short. And all of a sudden you have this hell on wheels, just like you saw on the, on the TV show and it's stopped right here. Okay. So all of a sudden where they didn't need a town, they put a town. And so when you see this thing and you look at it and you're like, why would there be a town out here? It's because of that situation that happened is that that bridge was not being able to, to, it was too short. So they had to build another bridge. And in the meantime, they had to wait. And so the, the, uh, Hell on Wheels stuck right here. And so this is the story also of where the Cowboys came uh, uh, to, to chase the robbers down and, uh, and they killed them. And then they came back later and uh, had one last drink. And this is a documented story. It sounds too creepy to even be real, uh, but, there, but it is documented. And so there's all kinds of stuff in the Southwest that's here. So let's get back on the highway just so you can take a look. Now there is stuff, you know, you can go, uh, you can go to uh, Apache Death Cave and then you can follow this on down and then you can go in, swing in, pay a, pay a brief visit to Mr. Cundiff who's right here in Winslow, Arizona, pretty cool town. Uh, right here is, I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, down here is the uh, standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. Okay. And then here is, there it is right there. It says it right there. Okay. Now, where is it at? And then you go under the train tracks right there. Okay. This place kicks ass. This is one of the uh, one of the uh, Harvey hotels uh, that was originally built. There's a bunch of them on the main line going out here, and uh, so uh, there's they have a museum in it. There's a garden here that's beautiful, and then this is still a railroad station, and uh, and you can actually stay here as well. And it is absolutely gorgeous. You have to stop there if you're making this loop. And, uh, and then you can drive right out of here and get on out of town. And, uh, and then home lobby state parks right here. And, and it's a killer place. If you like Indian ruins and it's all paved and this is an easy one and, and all the, everything's a sidewalk. What I hope they don't put in Gila Bend, uh, but it's okay for being up there. Uh, and then you have that and then you can come down here and, uh, 
and go to Holbrook right here. Holbrook has stuff everywhere. Uh, there's the, you don't miss the, uh, the, uh, uh, the historical society. I was going to say that, but it was, it's actually the courthouse. Okay. And then you also have, uh, uh, the station where uh, Geronimo was loaded up, you have the Bucket of Blood Saloon right in here. And uh, and this was a historic city. And then across from, from here, you have the Blevins home, which is right over here. And you've got dinosaurs of Hallbrook there. You actually had that. This is where the shootout took place of the uh, or Perry Owens. And then if you get into the, is that the cemetery? There's a cemetery right there. You go in these gates right here is the Blevins family. They are laid to rest there. They're the ones that were uh, were cut down by uh, Perry Owens. And this is all uh, having to do with the Pleasant Valley War. And it was a wild west town. There's a ton of stuff to do there. And then you can go back in and come out and take your, your, your ride back, uh, back to Arizona. Uh, like Arizona, uh, back to Phoenix. So what a great trip. Uh, real quick, why I'm, why I'm out here, uh, let me get back in here. If you guys aren't a part of this guy's channel, you should be, and uh, you should always be a part of the uh, uh, Timeless Tourist, uh, Arizona Timeless Tourist. Uh, you should also be a part of John's, which is the uh, Small Town Tourist. You should be a part of Jay's, uh, social media as well on all his sites. And if you get a chance, uh, if you like uh, drone stuff, this is the, my drone guy right here. And this is his site right here, Nevada Drone Archaeology. This is all Bob does is he does all this and there's a bunch of them. So if you like, if you like uh, uh, rock alignments, and and all kinds of different stuff like this uh please subscribe to his channel that's nevada drone archaeology and he goes to every one of these sites so he he won't shoot them unless he's on top of them but he has all kinds of intaglios and all kinds of rock alignments and all kinds of cool stuff if you're into that kind of stuff he's a great uh, source to get a hold of and take a look he goes all over nevada uh, Arizona, all the way through the Southwest. He is a great guy. So if you get a chance to follow him, please do so. And, uh, you know, he's a good dude. And, uh, and I like to support the people that support me and he definitely supports me. If you can give me a like button up there, I would love that. If you can't do anything else, please give me a like. That would be awesome. Now. So this historical old West town that tombstone said the tombstone epitaph said was the wildest town in the West. Uh, and then one day the, the, uh, the bridge came in to put the bridge in and boom, it was history. And then it went to the wayside. So this is what happened on the other side of two gun into Canyon El Diablo. So we'll push that in why we're having so much fun.
miss lies and legends. Didn't you expect Clint Eastwood to come out from behind one of those buildings? I did. So how did a town that was the most violent town in the West, the entire West, the bloodiest town, get to be, and you've never heard of it, Canyon El Diablo? In 1853, a lieutenant, Emil Whipple, was on a survey party and they came to this gorge. The gorge was 255 feet deep, 520 something feet across, and he called it Canyon El Diablo, the devil. So the railroad ordered the bridge, and in 1881, they came across the point where they were gonna build the bridge. And the bridge was too short. So this train, and if you've seen Hell on Wheels, you understand that there were 250 plus workers building this track that was stopped dead. Now what to do? Well, they built a town. And that town sprang up to 2,000 people, 14 saloons, 10 gambling halls, and four dens of prostitution. Big Nose Kate was there. B.S. Mary was there. The legendary brothel owners set up shop in El Diablo. And the town blew up. The town got so violent that they called Main Street, Hell Street. 35 people lost their lives. And we're not talking about all the robberies and all the mayhem that went on. That town ran 24 hours a day. It got so bad they decided that, as any civilized town should, they, they hired a sheriff. And they hired him at three and they buried him at eight. All five sheriffs in that town didn't last 30 days. So finally, they called Prescott to try to get the cavalry in. And by the time the cavalry got there, in that short time of... The bridge had been completed, and the train went on, and it became legend from there. But in the wake of that time, more people were killed in that town than Tombstone and Dodge City combined. Billy the Kid hung out in that area. All the desperados that you've read about came through El Diablo. And today, it is the bloodiest town the West have ever known. You know, there's a great story about the guy that they dug up to have a drink with. So if you get a chance to see that video, please do so. Uh, two guys, they robbed a uh, card game and they got on the train and they they ran off and they stopped at uh, El Diablo and the uh, posse chased them and shot them dead and shot one of them dead in the street and they buried him. And the cowboys that they had robbed at the card table uh, decided as they're in a drunken state that the guys that came in to get their last drink didn't get their last drink. So they went all the way back up to El Diablo and they dug him up and they they had a last drink with him. And it's pretty disgusting. And there's pictures of him. So that story is out. I have that story. I, I didn't I thought I loaded it, but I did not. So, you know, the point is, is that you have so many things that you can do on this on these loops. Uh, in the state of Arizona is so much fun and there's so much, uh, so much stuff out there for everybody to see. It's really uh, a pretty cool experience. And uh, one of my favorite places that I've ever been is, is two guns in the Apache death cave. 
uh, it's a long journey over to those buildings. Uh, and again, it, you would be trespassing now. So, so pay attention. And, and those trains run through there 70 miles an hour. And it says on the track, no trespassing across their tracks. Didn't used to be that way, but that's one of the reasons that, you know, when we talk about Arizona and shutting down Arizona, uh, man, that's why we got to be careful because that we'll lose our, the history that we do have. And uh, so make sure that you tune in on Tuesday so you can help support the fact that, uh, you know, we, we want to keep it open. We do want to conserve it. So don't get me wrong. We do want to conserve it. But cons conservation does not mean closure. And if conservation means closure, it's not conservation. It's closure. And so that's that's something we're going to get into on Tuesday. If you know anybody as a part of the uh, BLM or any of that kind of stuff that wants to come in and uh, and put their two cents in and go from there, so we can keep this great state of ours open, and uh, and we need to also be responsible as well. But uh, there's so many places out there that you know the history of Arizona is just runs so deep. And uh, so that's why it's important for me to believe that we videotape everything because eventually they'll, they'll, it, they'll hopefully not shut it down, but there'll be a time when you can't get in the Apache death cave. I will guarantee you, you know, you're on a short time lease. Uh, it just, it's, it's just a matter of time before something happens and they shut that place down. And so if you've ever wanted to go to these locations, you need to get in the car uh, and go because it, they're not going to be available. You know, these places that we have and we hold dear to our hearts. And Apache SK is one of my favorite places. I'd go back there again. I mean, it's not some place that you go and you're done. And that zoo is incredible and the history and the walls. And there's so much to, to see, to walk around. Uh, you know, this it's just an abandoned place, but it's really cool. And uh, there's a lot of stuff there. And so that's something you definitely need to put on your bucket list if you have not uh, done that. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, but there's, but don't miss the story of the cowboy they dug up, uh, to have the one last drink with. And, and, and there's a funny picture because the guy's got what they call a death grin. So they dug him up and, and they're holding him up and he has this grin. And again, they call it a death grin. It's not something, you know, it's not, it's not demonic, believe it or not. It's just what happens sometimes. Uh, when you go somehow and your muscles, your gums uh, sp spin like that. And then all of a sudden it looks like you're smiling, but it's kind of creepy. I'm not going to say it's not, but excellent place to go. So please make sure that you subscribe. Please make sure that you, you like, if anything, hopefully if you enjoyed it at all, if you give me a thumbs up, uh, make sure that you also uh, tune in to Newsbreak, which is an app on Apple. You can have Google as well. You can have a, a different phone as well. It doesn't have to be Apple. But uh, and, and follow Mad History. That definitely helps me if you'll do that. And uh, please subscribe and watch the videos we have. Uh, it definitely helps the channel and it keeps me going. And uh, I like doing lives. I want to keep doing lives, but lives are expensive to, to, to run. Uh, it, it costs a ridiculous amount of money to, to, uh, to stream uh, high-speed 1080 to get the quality of the picture that I would definitely like. But uh, I appreciate all you guys. It's been awesome. We've had a lot of fun. And uh, thanks for everybody for hanging out tonight and coming in on this, uh, on this Thursday evening. Have a great one. Be careful out there. We'll, we'll logo this sucker out of here. Adios!
side am I on? What side am I supposed to be on? I never know. Adios, amigos. Have a good evening. I appreciate you. See you, uh, Indiana. Peace.